Good day gamers, Purple Mentat here, bringing you another vlog. Today we're going to go a little bit inside the mind of Mentat, take a look at some channel news, and see what's coming up, talk about the Patreon, that sort of thing. So first off, where have I been? Well, I've been a little sick starting last weekend, I'm mostly recovered now, some sort of minor flu bug or something, feeling great, lots of tea, but it was just no energy and body aches and kind of bleh. So... Didn't get a lot done this week. Apologies for the lack of videos. However, I had been hard at work. And that brings us to a major source of frustration for me. So last vlog, I talked at length about how excited I was to get into Blast Off. And I immediately after I recorded that vlog while it was editing and uploading, I started recording some Blast Off. And I got three episodes in. And I was really focused on using the mechanics to kind of like shortcut a few things and I was diving into Batania early to start getting some stuff together and then the mod developer made a major mechanical change to the way Batania works yanked uh mana put mana steel in a gate behind Galgadorian metal as well as the mana diamond required something else completely ridiculous to make and Batania was basically essentially completely locked off for me I had spent three episodes talking about how I was going to get into Batania and making plans for it and detailing how I was going to be able to shortcut ahead of things with that. So yeah, that was an hour and a half of footage that it was I had already been all cut together and probably nine hours of work to create that. Maybe 12. That was wasted. Gone. Destroyed. There, It was useless. I had to start over. So I started over. And... During my first play, I had learned a few things about the map, and I had found some neat things that I would be able to use to speed things up. Specifically, there was a room that was really easy to get to in one of the nearest dungeons that contained a furnace and a bed. And I started. I had a couple of episodes recorded. I was building up a backlog. I was getting somewhere. And then the developer announced that in the next major update, he's going to remove that dungeon. It is no longer going to exist. You're going to have to travel farther and you're not going to be able to punch your way through a wall of snow to get to it. Also, in the meantime, he released a... or he or she, I'm not actually actually certain. I'm using he as the inclusive English grammar. We use the male to include the female in terms of uncertain gender. It's ancient English, but it's the my speech pattern. It's stuck in my head. So anyway, the developer... Uh, decided to change Galgadorian metal and started adding on a whole new recipe to make it in, I think, the pressure chamber for... What was it? Um, the Mattercraft? Which, that wasn't a big deal, I wasn't there yet, but it still meant that there was a whole bunch of stuff that was basically changing the entire economy of the mod pack. Baseline mechanical issues that should have been figured out long before it left Alpha. I mean, he's calling it a beta in 1.2.3 and moving to 1.2.4 completely changes the progression of a mod. And then moving from 1.2.4 to 1.2.5 and 1.2.6 completely changes like what you're able to do in the mod pack. It was too much. And now there's talk of maybe reducing the requirement of Galgadorian metal in the pack at large. Basically... Everything's changing too fast. We're having what are supposed to be very minor version revisions. Oh, and also um, changes in the mod list, adding and removing zombie awareness over to like point uh, like point point one revisions. These are supposed to be minor version revisions and bug fixes from everything that I have studied on proper versioning, and there are pretty major changes happening. So. Uh, a, a pack that is that early in development and has that much going on, that much changing on a day-to-day -day basis, I can't make a stable Let's Play for. I need something that has at least a good early to mid game that's in a fairly stable state so that I can make five episodes and know that by the time I'm done recording episode five, everything I've covered in the first four won't be obsolete. And that was my experience with Blast Off twice. And I wasted probably 24 hours, like some people's entire work week recording and researching and planning and setting things up and then having all of that yanked out from under me. So, Blastoff's not happening. 
I will take a look at it again so at some later point and see if it's calmed down a bit and reached a good stable spot. But right now it's all over the place. Uh, there, I have no idea what's going to happen next or if a video that I record will even be worthwhile or worth hanging on to. And I can't work in those uh, conditions. Sorry, folks. I was really excited to go exploring around with Galacticraft, and maybe I'll find a different mod pack to play with it in, but... For right now, I, I, I can't manage Blast Off. So, instead, I've gone with Choice 2, which was always Regrowth. And man, do I love Regrowth. I'm five episodes in, and I want to be recording another episode of it right now, and I had to, like, almost physically stop myself from doing more to talk to you guys. The first episode just finished uploading while I was talking to you here, and I am so excited about this pack. It is so good. The way Agricraft and Batania and Magic Crops are all integrated together, I love it. I love it to death. If you guys don't like, like, farming and breeding, you might despise everything about this Let's Play, but I am so happy about this pack. Now, Regrowth is a pack that's claiming to be an alpha that I think probably deserves to be in beta because it is so stable and so little is changing in the early game. However, it's considered alpha because some of the late game quests, especially surrounding a couple of the higher tech tier mods, aren't done yet. And he doesn't want to, the, the Phoenix Lodge who is producing that. And I don't know if that's like an actual group. I don't know if they're I, I've done no research here. I am completely unprepared and a, a terrible, terribly unprofessional here. But uh, you'll find links to both Blast Off and Regrowth in the doobly doo. Um, Regrowth is just good. It, it's well designed, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I'm looking forward to what's next and what else can what else it can do. And despite the fact that none of the challenges are super grindy or like huge resource requirements the way a lot of the Agrarian Skies stuff was, well, the early Agrarian Skies wasn't, but that's beside the point. Um, I'm really enjoying like the initial infrastructure and hey, here's my take on the way all of this works together. And I'm just really enjoying the mechanics of Agricraft. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys will be excited to go along on the journey with me. I just... I so much fun with this pack. I can't wait to play more of it. Okay, so that's enough of me waxing poetic about uh, Regrowth. I have uh, five episodes recorded, uh, a couple of them edited, one of them just finished uploading. They should be, they'll be going live tomorrow, and unless I get hit by a meteor from space or something similarly cataclysmic happens, I should be back on my one Minecraft, one major Minecraft a day um, schedule. And also, this experience of, like, taking some time off and exploring my options and really finding a pack that grabbed me the way Regrowth does, I think that, uh, I I'm going to be repeating it. I think I'm going to take a little bit of time off between major Let's Play series, unless I happen to have started another one while I'm in the middle of things, which it's looking like plans are that's what's going to happen. But... Like, my major primary flagship series is always probably going to be an HQM pack where I'm doing a tutorial focus and I'm putting a lot of time into recording each video and doing a lot of the boring grinding stuff off screen. That series, that primary series, is always going to be once a day, at least. That, that, always is a very strong word. My plan is, right now, the place that I feel ha uh, happy and confident doing it and kind of the channel brand I want to keep pushing and I hate that word branding but I guess I am like technically selling the purple mentat brand of videos here I want to continue that uh as a one a day thing and everything else will be like when it happens um so to make sure that I keep the production quality high when I finish a series, I'm probably going to take a few days, up to a week, to myself to figure out what the next series is going to be. Unless I happen to uh, actually be a professional and have the backlog ready, in which case, when I finish the series... Well, no, because I'll still need to... Uh, it's uh, Time is complicated. I am horrible at time management and I need to get better at it. But you can expect a few days break between primary series with a bunch of... Uh, fluff and filler content in the middle because that's just I, I I like that I'm gonna keep doing that it worked out well this time I found a pack I'm really excited about and I stopped myself from forcing myself into a pack that would have been a really big headache for me if I had set up to launch blast off the day after clouds of darkness finished 
then, well, you'd be hearing this vlog right now with me telling you, sorry guys, I can't continue Blast Off, and I'd have another dead series on my channel, and I'm already, like, not happy with the number of, uh, uncompleted series on the channel, and seriously considering going back and finishing up, like, Mark of the Ninja and Running Red, just to remove the number of dead series that I have. But... I don't know. Maybe. Uh, this is me unfiltered. You get me unfiltered and uncut in my vlogs, which is very not the norm for YouTube, from what I understand. People do a lot of, like, jump cuts and editing, and I don't do that with my vlogs. I hit record, and I trim the beginning of it off and the end of it off, and you get me rambling in the middle. I try to keep a little outline here so that I can uh, try to make sure I hit all the right points. But when I forget, you get a really seriously stream of uh, consciousness uh, vlog, and uh, I usually end up forgetting to cover half the points that I want to touch on. All right, I'm breaking my own rule here because I totally forgot something important that I actually really wanted to share with you folks. I have been made aware of two new Minecraft streamers, well, not streamers, YouTubers, uh, over the past week that I want you guys to be aware of as well because they're actually kind of great. Uh, first among them is a new, uh, UK female streamer by name of Zaxeus. I'm probably mangling that. Anyway, she's doing a playthrough of ME4, Material Energy Hypercubed, and she seems to be having a great time, and I love her style. It is calm and laid back and kind of chill, and she isn't so obsessed with filling every moment of airtime with commentary. And she knows what she's talking about. She shows the mods and the mechanics. She shows where to find the secrets on the map. It's good stuff. I've been checking her out. She is at a grand total of 65 subscribers at this time. So it reminded me of when Bevo initially pointed me out on one of his little gaming news or vlogs or whatever, and I wanted to kind of try to pay that forward a bit by pointing to you guys a couple of folks that I think you'll be fans of, and Zaxeus seems right up there. You'll find a link to her, her channel in the doobly-doo, and hopefully I'll have remembered to put it on the screen here somewhere. Go check her out, she's fantastic. The other channel I wanted to point out to you is TNC Creations, which is a whole different bag of worms. They're playing a special custom mod pack that they put together themselves, and it is a father and son duo. And it's not my usual enjoyable content. In fact, I'm not much of a viewer of Let's Plays at all, but these two have great on-screen chemistry, and I found myself, like, actually laughing out loud at a number of number of things. So, they're pretty cool. Go check them out. You'll find a link below. Um, I'm not as big a fan of them as I am Zaxeus, but... I was surprised to find how much fun they were to watch, considering how much that's not my general style of content, not the sort of thing I would actively seek out. Okay, we now return you to your regularly scheduled vlog. Uh, okay, let's talk about some other upcoming stuff that's happening. Uh, game auditions, three of them coming up. Dying Light, I finally have a solid opinion on and I'm gonna get that done, and you should expect that Monday. Grey Goo. I've had an opinion on that, but I haven't been working on it because I wanted to get this Dying Light thing done. You can expect that Wednesday. And I'm, I just got press code from Handle Aubrey Games for Sentinels of the Multiverse. Their uh, computer slash iOS slash Android adaptation of the Sentinels of the Multiverse card game. And you can expect that Friday. Um, spoilers, I'm a giant fan of Sentinels and... Um, you can probably expect a positive review on this one. So, uh, what else we got? Well, I say review, I mean first impressions, but it's not really first impressions. I've played a lot. Of, anyway, it's a good game. I'll go over it in detail on Friday, and uh, you can hear my thoughts on whether I think the current version of it, plus the season pass that just released, is worth the money. Uh, Patreon. Let's talk Patreon. You guys, like, had a resurgence on Patreon after my last vlog, so... Thank you. I really appreciate that. It helps me not be beholden to the advertising beast, and I really prefer the idea of trying to talk to the audience I have instead of always trying to aggressively expand that audience. I mean, yes, I'm hoping the audience will expand, but I don't want to have to 
appeal to the largest possible demographic, which if YouTube says anything, the largest possible demographic are PewDie Bros. And PewDiePie is fun to watch sometimes, but I, I can't be that. I just can't. I, I, I will throw myself out of a window after about day four. Um, and, you know, that's a terrible glib joke to make, as especially as someone who has been institutionalized for being suicidal before. So I apologize to that for anyone, any of my more sensitive viewers. Um, so the Patreon server, we are struggling and working as hard as we can to get Industria Arcanum ready for public beta. And I think we're honing in on a good spot for that. Uh, if you should have access to the Patreon server and don't, please contact Safram at the email address that should be showing up right about here and let him know and he'll get a hold of me and we'll verify everything and things will be good. Um, we won't be doing a reset until we're ready to put Industria Arcanum on there and as much as I had hoped that it would have been in time for the proper monthly reset, it doesn't look like we hit that as we're five days past that and... Um, well, I mean, dev, sometimes unforeseen incidents come up. We're dealing with it as best we can. It's an exciting pack. I've had some time to mess with it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you can expect some fun, uh, mods in this pack that are also making appearances in other major packs, such as Agricraft and, uh, Fluxed Crystals. I believe Fluxed Crystals from the Jaded Dev streams I'm, I've seen lately is also going to feature heavily in Agrarian Skies 2 and Magic Farm 3. So yeah, uh, there's some fun stuff coming up. Um, I'm looking forward to getting into it. Uh, speaking of Minecraft servers, if you're in need of this of a server, and this next bit is sponsored content, however, I firmly believe they are an awesome company, check out Aklas.net. They are fantastic. Their prices are a little bit higher than some of the competition, but they're worth it. I've been with, uh, this is the sixth Minecraft hosting company that I have ever worked with either as a customer or a partner and i've worked with them all including aklas as an anonymous customer before i ever partnered with anybody and aklas has treated me the best out of all of them i've gotten the best performance and they have the absolute best control panel my absolute favorite feature is the ability to in a couple of quick clicks switch from one entire instance plus world into another Right now we have Direwolf 20 uh, 1.0.3 on the Patreon server, but I could switch that over to a regrowth server in like two or three clicks. Actually, that's not a bad idea. If you do, let me got, let me know. Tell me in the uh, comments below. Would you guys like to see a Patreon regrowth server? Because we could probably get another server set up and do that. Tell me below. Uh, and then you'd have options. You could play Industria Arcanum with me, or you could play regrowth. Uh, if we do end up putting regrowth on the server, I might actually just load up my single-player world as the server world. Huh. Live brainstorming with Mentat. Tell me what you think, folks. Um... So yeah, there, there, there's my, uh, uh, bit on Aklas. I really like them. You can find a link and a coupon code for a percentage off your initial, uh, month or sixth with, uh, Aklas in the doobly-doo down below. And uh, it will help support me a bit. I'll get a bit of a kickback from you signing up with them. Highly recommend Aklas. Love their company. And wish I had been shilling for them a little bit harder, a little bit longer. Because they have been providing us fantastic service since September. And I have been remarkably lax in pushing their service. Uh, and that's on me. Because, you know, I pretty much uh, fell into the black depths of, of depression in the winter. I feel great now, though. Life is good. There's hope and, like, sunlight, and I get to see sunrises, and yeah, that makes things a lot better. I really need to get a better seasonal handle on things, but that's the therapy thing. Um, I'm still waiting for my initial appointment because it got my initial initial appointment was canceled due to snowstorm, and uh, it'll happen when it happens. Uh, I'm going to also be seeing a regular physician to establish a new relationship with the primary care physician, get a full physical, complete blood count, metabolic panel, all that sort of thing. And uh, they're going to take a look at my uh, sugar and blood pressure they're especially worried about, which with a person my size, those are serious things to be concerned about. I haven't had much of the symptoms of sugar, but uh, of uh, diabetes or sugar issues, but 
Uh, hypertension runs in the family, and it is definitely something I've been treated for in the past, and who knows, maybe part of my lack of energy some days is just my blood pressure going wonky, and I need to be on something to better regulate that. But, you know, I'll keep you guys up to date on my medical issues as I go through them, because I have been told more than once that talking openly about these things has been very helpful to people, which actually brings me to the Ask FM. Uh, question of the day. Let me see if I can get that up here. Um, and this one I'm actually just answering in the vlog. I haven't actually typed out an answer to it. Uh, so I think a lot of people empathize with you and you gained a lot of your fan base due to you being so open about your mental state. How do you feel that maybe some of your fans feel the same and might watch your videos at the end of the day to make it a little brighter? I know for myself, I do. Well, a lot of my fan base actually came in before I started talking about my mental health problems in any big way. I was very remarkably private about talking about this stuff, and I never wanted to show my face when I started this. And then I decided, you know what? I don't want to be that. I don't want to hide behind a veil of anonymity and just be another faceless YouTuber. I wanted to connect with people and talk to them face to face and help raise awareness about this sort of thing. So the idea that there are people that can identify with some of the things I go through and that my videos can help brighten their life some, I think that's great. I, I love that some people get that out of what I do. I would highly encourage anyone who can identify with some of the issues that I'm going through with my mental health to talk to a therapist. That first appointment is scary and it's hard to find the right person to build the rapport with that you can trust and that you can really open up to but the time that i've spent in therapy has been better for me than anything else i have done in my life uh, in terms of growing as a person and i'm of at least a middling strong belief that everyone in the western world could do with speaking with a therapist at least briefly to talk about the challenges that they're dealing with and the ways that they feel like their life could be better and the ways that they feel like their mind is stopping them. Even if you don't have any sort of diagnosable clinical mental health problem, most people got some issues that they could use some help working out. And we've built a culture around ourselves where asking for help is the worst thing you can do. At least, especially for like males. We are not allowed to show weakness or ask for help, and it's a terrible thing. <sighs> it's sad. Um, but yeah, if you feel like you can identify with what I'm going through and my videos help you, I'm very happy for that. If you have any questions about like where you can find some more professional help, then feel free to email me, private message me on YouTube, and I'll do my best to show you some resources in your area. If I remember to, I will put a link in the doobly-doo for some more global resources, but those are relatively hard to find because, like I said, mental health just doesn't get the exposure that it needs in this world. And it doesn't get the respect that it needs in Western society. We, we often hear, you know, you're to blame for your de depression, but we don't harass and... Um, make people we, we don't like tell diabetics they're to blame for their blood sugar problems at least type 1 diabetics type 2 diabetics are almost always but not not entirely always but almost always entirely entirely to blame speaking of which if i end up diabetic it'll be type 2 it'll be all my fault because i ate all the pizza <laughs> also the fudge oh my god fudge we just made fudge last night and it is so hard not to go to go eat the entire container of it because om nom nom fudge um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's all that I had for you guys this uh, vlog. Thanks for joining me. You'll have another rambling, long-winded rant about everything coming up soon, uh, probably by Wednesday next week. I'm going to try to keep doing about two of these a week and talk to you guys about where things are and where things are going. Unless I just don't have anything to talk about, then uh, you won't hear much from me. Oh, also, the next one should be the plushie parade. I just need to convince uh, Apollo Cat to help me out with it. So, thanks very much, folks, and I'll see you next time.